All right. Hey! Trophy oh, truck on. test. Hold hey! On now. Hold on, hold on. Uh -oh. oh, we're coming in hot. What's up, everybody? I'm John. I'm Isaac. And today on Cars and Cameras, we are prepping and sending our 1,000cc BMW-powered trophy cart. Uh, we have some mods to make it better and safer to jump, and then we're going to do a good old sail test. All right, we do have some exciting news to share. Sure. Let me be the first one to announce that Charles is now with Cars and Cameras full-time! Full -time. Woo! All right, I know. I'm excited. Welcome to the team, dude. Yes. It's a good feeling. Awesome. I, I, now, now that he's here, I'm taking the day off. See you guys. <laughs> We're starting things off with a quick and dirty alignment. We need to tilt the tops of the tires out. So we're going to increase camber because in previous videos, it just kind of sits really low with a lot of camber. We're also going to uh, reset the toe. We're going to show you guys how to do that as well. How to do a quick and dirty alignment, like I mentioned. Yeah. And we're going to install some new rear springs to help the rebound. This thing does this gnarly kind of pole vault thing when it jumps. So we're going to be fixing that. And we're going to add a five point harness for safety. So let's get to work, Charles. All right, so we're going to start things off by uh, adding a little bit of positive camber on the tires here. And this is why we put like 30 hind joints in this thing so we can adjust it when we need to. Some are reverse thread. Yep, that one would be reverse thread. There it is. So that's okay. So we're just gonna leave it fingered loose so we know where it was preset. There's that nylock nut. So we're gonna spin our joint up about three turns to begin with, and we're gonna check it, see man, what we got. Go big time, man. Go big time, Ike says. Okay. Go four. There's five. That is big time, big time indeed. We we did a reverse kachow mod. Alright, actually that was... Let's check it. So it looks like we're going to need to add in a little bit more positive camber, but we're going to go ahead and jump ahead to the toe, which is something that everybody can learn from uh, for a DIY <laughs> alignment job on their go-kart, to a car, to their custom trophy cart. So I'm going to show y'all the quick, easy, dirty way to do the alignment on your go-karts not mini bikes mini bikes not needed even though i've told people that they need alignment on their mini bikes anyhow <laughs> let's hear it story. Man. let's hear it so what you do is uh you put boards right here on your tires halfway up and we got one on the other side and what we're going to do is we're going to measure the tips of the boards the longer the boards the better uh, but this is what we have. So we're going to measure the tips of the boards. And what I have here is, I'm going to say 56 and the eighth. If you have a smaller number in the front, when you measure, your toe is in. The tips of the tires are pointing towards each other in the front. If you have a smaller number in the rear, you have toe out, which means the rear parts of the tires are closer to each other, meaning that the tires are kind of looking out at each other. So we're going for zero toe in this application here. She's toe in. Toe in, huh? We've got 50, almost 59. So 58 and uh, 15, 16. And toe in. Okay, you know what? Let's get scientific here. All right. Welcome to Cars and Cameras Alignment Class 101 when it comes to adjusting your front toe. So in this picture, this diagram here, we have an example of toe in, zero toe or neutral, and toe out if the vehicle's pointing this way. And of course, this is a bird's eye view of looking down at the front wheels. Toe in is when the front wheels are looking at each other. The fronts are pointing towards each other. Zero toe is when they are perfectly parallel. And toe out means that the fronts of the tires are pointing away from each other. Now they all have different applications in the real world and in racing, but for today, we're gonna go with just a little bit of toe in when the suspension is at rest. Because the way this twin traction beam suspension setup works, we're actually gonna get toe movement uh, in and out as the suspension travels. It's called bump steer and it's kind of inevitable with this type of suspension. So that's why we want just a little bit of toe in so that at any given point, hopefully we shouldn't go too far into the toe out zone, which can kind of make things squirrely at high speed. 
So we adjust the toe right there on this vehicle. It's pretty nifty. We have those heim joints. All we need to do is loosen the nuts and, and spin it one way or the other. And that adjusts our toe. Adjusts. <laughs> adjusts. It's not a word. Alright, so we have our alignment taken care of. We still have a little bit of camber, but we got most of the negative camber out. We did a little bit of adjusting to the toe, and we have it like we want it. So now we're moving on to the five-point harness. Hitting my head on the back bar here. It's not great. You want a helmet? No, no, I think I'm good. Sorry if I hit you. So the key the with the seat belts in this case, well, it's gonna be tricky. You want your mounts for the shoulders? Above the shoulders themselves. Or, or even. Or even, okay. Yeah. So since I have, I'm the tallest guy, you probably want to set it up for... The like, tallest person. The tallest person that's going to be riding it. So what are, what are we looking like? It's a lot higher than I thought it would be, I'll tell you that. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, so it's going to be tricky. Because we don't want a, a straight bar coming right behind Isaac's head. It would be nice if they were adjustable. Oh, that would be nice. It would be okay. nice because, uh, like, but, if you if we set it up for me, that means uh, when you hop in it to go for a ride, you're gonna have a lot of slop. Slop. So if you roll it, you actually you're gonna actually move towards the ceiling if you roll it. So yeah. like if we threw so, bolt these, we could have a few few different holes. To could move, it, yeah. move the bolts up and down. Of course, yeah. grade eight for safety reasons. We don't even have to have them mounted on that bar. We just got to have a bar that they hang over. Oh, that's right. Harness bar. Yeah. Oh. All right, so we've measured where Ike's shoulders are gonna go, about 28 inches up from the bottom frame rail down there. So we're thinking of a simple tube up from here, bent, uh, and then back down, tying into the frame and the upper shock mount should be nice and strong. And from there, we have plenty of areas to brace it with. So I'm gonna show our buddy Charles how to use the Rogue Fab tubing bender. It's gonna be his first time. We're gonna get this thing bent and get it tacked in and try not to hurt the uh, splatter paint job too much. All right, so our tube is all loaded up in the Rogue Fab bender. Let's go to 65 degrees, bud. Yes, sir. How do we do, Charles? First time out. Drum roll. First, First time out. Oh, man. Hey, man, just trim the excess. Yeah. We need to measure it, but that is looking beautiful. I think it's going to have to be tilted back some, mm -hmm. or moved back some. Yeah. Just for the sake of the helmet. The, the tell, the tell, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, sit in it with a helmet before y'all uh, tank it. Yeah. It's like Prager spaghetti sauce. It's in there. Well, let's trim the excess. <laughs> You never heard that? <laughs> no. My old shop teacher used to say that. If you'd go looking for a wrench and he'd say, it's, you know, well, I can't find it. It's like Prego spaghetti sauce. It's in there. We got the whole team going in on the trophy cart. Charles is going to keep working on the harness. Ike and Peyton are going to replace these rear shocks. Lava. So just to explain ourselves a little bit, these are the exact same make and model shock as what came off. They are just specially tuned with, it'll be fine, racing technology, performance parts. Basically, Ike drained some of the oil out of the shock to knock down the rebound, or yeah, basically make less rebound, which should give us that, the, the nice jump rather than the end over end jump. Did that make sense? I'm hoping that'll fix it. Perfect. Because it's either these shocks or we're spending like, you know, 
two or three thousand dollars on shocks more than we have in the rest of the project i cannot believe how expensive like for like shocks are i agree they're crazy i know or coil overs what do you whatever you want to call them there it goes a little more All right. Hey! Oh, trophy on, truck no. test. Hold hey, on now. Hold on, hold on. Uh -oh. Uh oh. The nut guard. New shocks are on. Rebound test. Passes. Might be a little soft on the back, dude. It looks a little soft. I'm a little heavy. Well, we can, we can, <laughs> we can give it a shot. I made it where we can add or take out fluid. Cool. Yeah. Only one way to find out, boys. Right. All right, so the sun's going down. We're going out for a Cars and Cameras family cruise here. Yep. And we already have an idea of what's gonna happen. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be worse. Well, let's go see. All right, all my research is telling me that it's gonna be worse. Whoo, that looks gnarly. As I thought, man, it really wants to uh, pogo kick the back up. So uh, it's not going to happen <clears throat> today. No, um, I feel like the rebound. We need to figure out a shock that has good soft compression, the slow release, but a slower rebound. Cool. Um, yeah. I wasn't going all out on that one, man. I was trying the different techniques like what I was reading with getting it up to speed, don't accelerate and, or accelerate going up and, and nothing seems to make it any better. Make any better. So, um, gosh, I want to keep doing it, but nothing, I'm, nothing I do is going to change anything. Right. So we need... Uh, we need less spring back. Plus, there's so much weight in the front compared to the back. Yeah, definitely a big part of it too. So if we added more weight to the back, that might help, but we'd probably have to add a couple of hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't see why we'd want to do that. I, I mean, agree. jumping. This 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 would be great for what we're doing around here, but jumping, not so great. So we're definitely learning as we go with this project. We never claim to be experts, and these, uh, sh this shock setup is not gonna work. So we're gonna need to look out for something else, but hey man, let's do some drift so at least we get something cool out of today's episode. Sounds good. I will say, it rides so much better. With and the alignment? Least, well, with the rear shocks softer, alignment done. I'm not driving around hitting bumps with my neck hurting. It's, it's, it's floating pretty good, but it just, it's not a jumper. And you look safer in there. How, well, how do the seat belts feel? Fantastic. Y'all did awesome. an awesome job on it. Thank you. Do a Bernie. Do what I do best. Sunset. Thanks for the help, guys. Oh yeah, no problem. I will. I mean, I think it's improved. Oh, I mean, the whole. Oh, we're coming in hot. Hey, at least it doesn't have crazy camber anymore. This is awesome. Maybe if you just go fast enough. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Maybe it's just the wrong
wrong type of jump. Yeah. Wait, hold on. That was something. That was, that was good. Glad I was I think he just needs more speed. That was better. What? That was better. More cowbell, baby. There's a stick. Poor cowbell. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I think it's just a top a third type of jump. Dude, the tires are like top really third. Hot. You know what I'm talking about. It means more speed. <laughs> more. Speed. Man, that back was up higher than the rest of them.